Hey, what the fuck is going on, guys? It's Super Bryce at you here, coming back at you. And today I'm playing some more Shadowfall Dragon Rune. And in the last episode, uh, Monica, the Australian chick who I'm... Or I don't know if she's Cockney Aust or Australian. I haven't decided that shit yet. But she, uh, she got her brain fried. That was in like two episodes ago. But the last episode, we ended it with me finding her dog, Dante. And you know what? I could give two shits about like human beings and stuff, but don't, don't fucking, don't fuck with the dog, man. I have a feeling that the dog is going to die, and then I'm really just going to lose my shit. So, just got done doing the dog dialogue, so we're going to talk to these people. Well, we'll talk to Gl Glory first, robot lady. How, how do, girl? How you doing? Glory is a beautiful wayfish. In a wayfish? Wa wayfish? Wafish? I think this game was written by, like, British people. Glory is beautiful in a waifish sort of way. Her features are almost elven in their delicacy. But there's something unsettling and cold about her that you find slightly unsettling. What's more than settling is her chrome. Glory is rocking a heavy load out of cyberware. From head to toe, she looks to be composed more of plastic and metal than of skin and bone. I was talking about that in the first episode. In the shadows, individuals such as this are anything but uncommon. But Glory Cyberware is first generation. All of it. Bulky, invasive, practically museum pieces. This chrome was obsolete well before she was born. Oh, good! So I'm running with a shitty, shitty version of shitty Robocop. But it's a chick. Dirty Krenus. <laughs> Forget. I forgot I named my dude Dirty Krenus. Oh, it gets me every time. Okay. Glory shifts her gaze to you, but her expression is as cool and placid as always. Can I help you? I can say, hey, Glory, how are you holding up? Any thoughts? Uh, I have a question for you, Glory. Personal kind. Uh, what do we do next? Find our mission client. Extract some answers Beyond that, find another Decker. Monica won't be easy to replace. Best start looking now. How are you holding up, girl? Hey, girl. Don't worry about me. I'm solid. You're fucking like a tiny, pe like a head attached to a body of robot. Robot-y. You sure you look like you're a million miles away? Yeah, because she's the fucking Terminator. You better be. If you flake on the job, you and me are going to have problems. Uh, if you say you're good, I trust you. I'm going to say, are you sure? No, I'm, I'm going to trust I'm going to trust her. She's she's crazy. She's she's bombastic. Glory's expression remains neutral, but she grants you a barely perceptible nod. I have a personal clip. <laughs> I got to do a personal question, girl. I'm not big on sharing sport personal reasons you understand I'm sure she called me sport maybe she doesn't she, I should uh, should have been reading it like that huh whatever the edge in her voice tells you that she's not interested in continuing the conversation I'll say of course we all have our secrets but I'm here if you ever want to talk me and my pipe all right let's talk to this military turd Actually, I think she's a troll, too. Or is she an orc? Because I, I I thought I was an orc for a while, but I realized I'm a troll now. Elger glares at you. You can taste the bile in her stare. Gross. She clearly still blames you for Monica's death. Something I can do for you, fearless leader? Um. You're wrong about me. I intend to prove, my, prove that to you. Oh, good. That's something that someone... Every time anyone in my life has ever went... I'm going to prove this to you. They've never done it. So I'm not going to go with that one. We need to talk about Monica. I apologize for that little outburst that you had. No, I'm going to say we need to talk about Monica. Not right now, we don't. Don't push me on this dirty, <laughs> dirty craniness. One of these days, I'm going to hash this out. And you can take, and you can talk all you like about the clusterfuck that killed one of my best friends, but it won't be today. Uh, fair enough. But before I go, I have something else to say. All right, I'll give you your space. No, I'm not gonna say anything else to her. She seems pissed. 
Come on, Dante. Let's go see Dickhead. Oh. Stuff. I want stuff. Um, I forget that this is a thing in this game sometimes. Dirty Krenus. Dante. You got nothing, girl. You got nothing. No, you don't. Hang on. No, you fucking don't. You don't talk. You are a dog. Okay, Alright, I'm done with this. I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize, everyone. Sorry. Alright, let's talk to a uh, dickhead. What's up, girl? Dydra turns his head as you approach. His aging face is traced with a network of faint scars. The legacy of too many fights over the years. Well, he still retains his degree of strength and vigor. It's obvious that the shaman won't see a shadow of his former self that we see today. Despite all of this, there is an aura of power surrounding the man. He raises his bond while offering it to you. Dirty Cranus, welcome. We've got a bottle of schnapps that needs some sharing. And we've got a fallen comrade to drink to. Well, I'll fucking drink to that. I'm more upset that her dog is sad than that she died. And also, I really like doing that Cockney slash Australian accent that I'm sure is offensive to everyone who is those things. So I'll drink to that. Clank. There we go. I'll take any excuse to drink. Alright, let's do this. Take the bottle. Demonica pros, take the bottle. Go ahead and toast Monica. I'm drinking to revenge. Refuse, don't drink. Uh, I'll drink to her. Fuck it, man. She was my friend, too. The liquor in the bottle is crystal clear. As you raise, you catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel. It tastes of sweet corn and walnuts. Gross. The lingering aftertaste of butternut toffee. You swallow a swig and then return the bottle to Dietrich. Outstretched hand. He takes a long pull of the bottle and locks eyes with you. I'm here. Let me ask you a question, Dirty Krenus. What made you choose to come to Berlin? Um. I'm a bad, bad boy. Um. Why do you want to know? Monica told me you moved here from the Rhine Ruhr Megaplex. Made it sound like you've been there a good many years. Successful years at that. Leads men to wonder why you packed up and moved here. Hmm. It's, uh, I have the options of, it was time to change, that's all. I remember my old crew betrayed me. I had just dropped out of sight for a while. I just had to drop out of sight for a while. A run went bad and my team paid the price. I'm gonna not say the team. I'm not gonna get him into that. We're 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 bonding right now. We're bonding. A uh, member of the crew betrayed me. I'm gonna say I just had to drop out of sight for a while. Sure enough, I think that most of the team is here hiding from something. Not me, of course. Given the choice between hiding from something and punching it smack in the nose, you know which direction I tend to lean. Uh, you are terrible. You are a terrible fighter. I healed you countless... Maybe I'm just playing you wrong. I'm sorry. But most of the others, even Elgar's hiding out from something. Well, obviously. She's working with a Decker in a Shadowrun group. We're we're Shadowrunners. We're mercenary. We're, oh, my God. We're mercs, dumbass. Okay, all right. Sorry. I want to say, really, how do you know? Intuition. I've got a nose for damaged people. Of course, I've spent my life running and playing for pokes who were damaged in one way or the other. So that might have something to do with it. I'm going good. You're... Why? What? So things got heavy back in Rufix. And you decided to bail and head to Berlin. Am I getting it right? More or less. <laughs> There's a bit more to it, but yeah. We'll, we'll just say that. So you came to Berlin and to Monica... Dietrich raises his bottle again, then closes his eyes and takes a long drink. After the moment has passed, he returns to attention and you. It all comes through our girl, doesn't it? So let me ask you, just what was your relationship with Monica anyway? 
I know that you two knew each other way back. But she was pretty coy about those things. Um, I'm going to say you're turning into dangerous personal territory. Probably, yeah. I wouldn't. I'm a shadow runner. Why would I share that information? Are we? Sorry about that. Never been much for boundaries. All the same. I'd like if you tell me. Uh, Diedrick shrugs. I always intended to get her no better, Monica better. But it's too late to ask her in person. Yeah, her fucking brain melted out. It was fucked up. That was the one of the most fucked up things I've ever read aloud. I respect that. Uh, I knew Monica well enough to know that she, what you mean. She did have a mysterious way about her. None of your business. I'm a second respect it. So what's the deal between you two? Don't leave me in suspense. I don't know. She was Australian. I don't think my troll dude would fuck her. So I'm not going to say we were very close. We were friends. I'm going to say we were close. Fuck it. Diedrich nods. Fuck, I fucked up the voice. I'm doing it again. Diedrich nods. Figured as much. Not from anything you or Monica had said. I just had a suspicion. Well, anyway. Good on you. Good on you both. Good on you both? What the fuck does that mean? She's fucking dead. Diedrich raises, Diedrich raises his bottle on you to salute. He puts his bottle directly in your boot to salute. She was a wonderful woman, and I hope your time that you had with her was happy together. Anyway, taking enough of your time, this bottle's almost empty. Thanks for taking the time to talk. For what it's worth... I'm happy you're here with us. Well, you know, I like you. I, I like you, guy. I do. I like Dietrich. I don't like doing his voice. It hurts my throat. Let me know in the comments what I should change his voice to because it's killing me. It's too close to the narrators. I feel like I have to... I'm reading this. I'm doing it like Batman. All right. It's Batman. Okay. Dietrich takes his final pull from the bottle and tips forward, pouring the rest on the ground. Rest in peace, Monica. We'll miss you, girl. Was that inappropriate to the chick who had, his, who had her tongue tongue melt out of her face? Yeah, it's fine. We're good. All right. It's not real. None of this is real. Daddy Karinas. Amsel peers at you apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot and his expression's grim. Did you get the information about Green Wintus? No, I didn't. No, I haven't left yet. I've been, I've been trying to console my team, my new team. That's my my new team of shadow runners. You saw me here. I walked into one room that had, I, uh, please. Then I saw you walk into one room with no exit, and now you're coming back out. Did you get the uh, information from uh, one of your crew members? You know, they didn't didn't want to tell me that you know was crucial to this. Please then continue working. We need to find that man. All right, while I'm running this, uh, we're, we're gonna go. We're we're gonna figure this shit out. I hope I get into a fight. I I I feel like this this is so heavily. What the fuck? Where the fuck am I going? Come on. Come on, Karinas. We have a cool uh, hideout, though. I mean, look at that shit. Come on. You know that you would totally love to have half that shit. All right, so here we are in the streets of Kickstarter. Because I can't pronounce anything correctly, but this is very cool. All right, let's talk to this little dwarven man. Myat Holali. He a whole lolly baby. Oh, it's a chick. The dwarvish tech vendor smiles at you with praised ease. Her almond eyes twinkling with the glare from a dozen triad screens. She speaks in crippled, heavily accented German. Oh, thank you. Finally, I get a cue on what to... I suppose I'm in Berlin. But I should have just been, like, speaking a grizzled, really shitty German accent this whole time. Thank you, game. Thank you, girl. End game. Welcome to the Data Haven. Can I have help with something? 
Um, uh, I need tech. I want a tight schedule. Show me what you got. Oh, she's, she's not going... Uh, that's more like Swedish... Swedish fish. Oh, this is all for Deckers. Alright, exit. Oh, I'm in the market for something exotic. Alright, no. She's she's no good to me. She's garbage. That German dwarf. And even in the future, there are still hippies growing gardens. Why don't you just eat poop? Round eyes peer up from under the hood of the grime smeared coat winter coat. You realize him is David. One of Cruz Bazaar street kids. If you had to guess, you'd place him in the mid teens. Though it's difficult to tell beneath the grime and acne marring of his face. Well, if he has acne, he's probably in his teens. Well, I hope I I don't know. I hope he's in his teens. Uh, he, he has a pretty cool house. You've seen him following Monica around between runs, chasing her heels like a lost puppy. You always seem to have a soft spot for the kid. Oh, she did. Oh, hoy, Daddy Krenus. Have you seen Monica around? I've been looking for her all over. She's dead. The kid blinks, a blank expression on his face. Um... It was horrible. There was blood everywhere. Yeah, that's fucked up. I'm saying it. The kid swallows hard under the shadow of his hood. You can see the color straight from his face. His face. His beautiful face. Look, I, I, I don't want to think about... I want to be alone right now. Yeah, fuck you, kid. I don't like you anyway. Come on, Dante. Ghost lady's dog. Where am I going? Not the right way, evidently. Wait, right here? Uh, hot chick. Uh, suit guy. Uh, hookah guy. Uh, oh, smallman. No, wait, this guy. I want to talk to uh, Bilbub. Bilbub. Achtung Bakrazi. The man behind the counter looks right past you and at the dog following close behind. Dante. Oh, that's my voice. We're gonna, don't, I'm just going to keep going with the... Every other voice is going to be a Scottish accent. Or the Cockney accent. Don, Dante. I'll fetch his water dish. Oh, he's going to be us. He's going to be Hugh Jackman. And perhaps a coffee. For our friends here. Paul Amsel sends his regards. Uh, yeah, sure. When he hears Amsel's name. The Turk's voice lowers and his accent becomes less exaggerated. His eyes stick out a knowing look. Oh, he's a Turk. So I don't know what he... Talking like a Middle East... I'm, I'm gonna sound real racist if I do that shit. Oh, very good. Please express to Herr Ansel my appreciation of his patronage. If he needs any more catering jobs to see in the future, I am always happy very much to provide. Thank you. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna switch back to the Cockney. Because that's fucking racist. Actually, I might stick with that. I don't know. Uh, he tells me your developers in the menu for a friend. Her, her, her winters, I believe. I want to hear about it. Powell's always pleased with spending business, sending business your way. So I think we can discuss some details. The coffee shop owner offers you a smile. Of course, of course. Our Amsel is too kind. I'm doing the, the, my best Apu impression. Bergazi turns his head to call to the Bergazi turns his head and calls to the back room. Got me, come. A young woman bustles out from the back room. Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. Bergazi spits something out into the rapid fire Turkish. As you as you wish, Uncle. I'll see to it right away. Now she probably sounds like an American, because nah, whatever. Eh, what is she, like, 12? Get the fuck out of here. 
Candy offers you a shy grin, snaps her gum, and hurries back into the room she came from. All right, calm down, Jubilee from X-Men, the animated series. Octung Barazi. Marco Cami is arranging to make a contract with the chef as we speak. They will likely take some time. My chef is a busy man. While we wait, I wonder if you'd be so kind as to run a small errand for me. I try for really. But I hate to trouble you, I am better Stephen to ask. But I know I'd be most appreciative if you help. Uh, yeah, what's your fucking, what do I gotta do? Octone's voice lowers nearly to a whisper. They aren't as simple. Hardly would he of you. I have installed a number of data tabs to the Berlin Fiber Optic Network as part of a civic duty. Y you understand. These traps provide free matrix access to all who live in Kruitz Bazaar. In order to maintain their, uh, how do I say, it? anatomy, each tap protocol buffer must be reset every few days. I simply wish you to visit the data tap and reset it. Okay, there's no fucking way. There's no, no catch, no crate. You know, he probably doesn't have people for this, but I'm going to ask him what the catch is. Come on. There is no catch, I assure you. It is time consuming and a bit tedious. Nothing more. Just reset the taps and come back here when you are finished. There should be three of them scattered around the neighborhood. The first one just outside. Look for a metal box with yellow arrows bent at the top. And by the time you return, I should have information on it. Amsel's requested. I have a feeling I'm going to be fighting someone in the next episode. Thanks for watching this far, everybody. My name is Super Bryce Chew. If you enjoyed this, you're probably not watching this far. If you are, hey, girl, um, let's be friends. Uh, message me on Skype. Um, yeah, that's all I got. But remember to, you know, fucking keep watching my shit because I'm going to keep going to keep trying to do it. Uh, hopefully this is my first stereo episode. Whoa. Radical close-up, man. Cool dog, man. All right, Trollman. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember that you need to watch Chop Almond. Those guys are goofballs. I love them very much. They're my good, my good friend and my friends, my friend, my friendins. And remember, at the end of all my videos, I say do.